All right. And I like to, before I do anything, what I like to do is define a couple things. I like to make sure that um, the definition is defined very clear and very early on, so all of us are on the same page. And that's a trick when you work with a global team. When you work with a global team with a multiple country, for example, target audience, right? If you work with the people in the Middle East and people in the Asia, they're gonna tell you, no, the target audience that's defined by the HQ, not necessarily working for them. Then you need to define that. So I got very used to and very accustomed that if I'm working for the global team, I want to define stuff very early on, right? So I define what the target audience is, I would define my objective. So that's one trick or one tip that I want to share with you. If you work with a global team, it's very important to define your objective and define, define your audience very early on, okay? So with that kind of mindset, I see all of you are pretty much my global team counterparts. So I want to define two things global team, and the content marketing. I don't really have to talk about content marketing because you guys are here. But the way that you see content marketing is really in four stages. You have a plan, then you produce or curate the content, then you syndicate and promote the content, and then you measure the effectiveness of content. There's not much to it. I'm pretty sure you are sitting here, you are doing something at one of these P's, something, okay? So that's four P's, very easy. I don't have to explain it anymore. Global team. Global is such a heavy word. When you say global, you were like, ugh. 2128 countries, it's just so, so much work. I agree. So that's defined global, again, from inside the client's perspective. When I say global in this context, for this sake, uh, for today's presentation, it's really headquarters and the locals working together to market, plan, and execute content marketing. That's it. Headquarters and local team. So I want you to think about that for how to put the global team together. Okay, that's our definition. So now we get a definition out of our way. Now you think about it, how to put a global team together, I can summarize in these two visuals. It's really the balance of the headquarter and local team with four Ps. Is you balance of the headquarter and local team to accomplish your content marketing efforts. That's really it. So what I want to talk about is how to do that in the next 40 minutes, okay? Is that good? If not, I want to just make sure all right, now putting a team together. Okay. There are two factors, two factors. I'm gonna do Y axis and the X axis. So the first one is, if you want to put a team together, let's put things up front. You need budget, you need resources. That's really a bottom line, there's one. Okay, budget and resources. I'm gonna put that as Y axis. And I will call them manager, tend to be a manager that will have a budget and resources. If you are individual contributors, if you are content marketers, but you are one person show, for example, you can still put a team together, but I will define that as no budget or very limited resources. Okay, so bear with me, one. Then there's another factors that you're gonna put together, I call it X axis is the team maturity. How do I define that? Back in 1965, there's a professor, his name is Bruce Tuckman. He claimed that uh, if for a team to grow, prosper, and productive, you need to go through four stages. You form a team, forming, then you have some epic battles, storming, and then you go in through that epic battle, you get to know each other. You know how it is, the story, you know, the girls and meet the boys and they fight and they gel and they fall in love, they live happily ever after. Same storyline, but that's use the co uh, corporate jargon. Forming, forming a team, storming, you norming, knows who is doing what, 
than you performing. The reality is, even though that sounds great, but if you think about it, all of us work in the real world. This is not linear collaboration. It doesn't work this way, right? It's like, oh, we form, we fight, we get to know each other, we live happily ever after. No, it's like party training. It's like one step forward, two step backwards. For people who have kids, you know what I'm talking about. For people who don't have kids, don't have kids. <laughs> I have two. Man, they are so much work. <laughs> but I love them. <laughs> I say that with hesitancy. Can you tell? <laughs> anyway, I set that aside. Let's go back to the topic of putting a team together. All right. So four stages. And let's put that as axis. X axis. I am a type of person I like to do two by two metrics. So I put in a two, four scenarios or four quadrants to share with you, and I give them names. All right, so if you are individual contributors, now think about your role, okay, what are you doing? If you are here, you obviously are thinking about putting a team together, yeah? Or if you are agency, you might be working with your clients. So if that clients don't have a budget, I call them frugal starters, and they are kind of like at the stage, they are kind of like want to do stuff, right, forming and storming. Maybe they do actually have some limited budget. They are to some point, they have some virtual team. I call them conductors, like overview. A lot of time your job is a program managers. You are working with so many different teams. You are like a conductor. So I call them creative conductors. If you don't have budget, you need to be creative. And then forming and storming with a budget and resources, sturdy starter. You have something sturdy to start. You have some budget. You have some resources. You got some management buy-in. And then, of course, another one is smart conductor, which is you got a team place. Hopefully, you are smart enough. You, you lead them to the right direction and do the right thing. So that's the four things I want to talk about. And I will talk about this. And I want to share with you, in terms of organizational structure, what it will look like. However, what I want to say in the front is the organizational structure I will share with you, take it as a grain of salt. Take it as a way that, OK, there are certain pieces applies to me. And then modify it, customize it, morph it as you see fit, as I would do. Okay, so I just want to share with you but you need to take into account of your company's uh, direction, objective, and also the situation that you are in. Don't take this as like, oh my god, this is what it needs to look like. No, pick pieces. But I will identify some areas from my perspective that you should pay attention to, that you sh I, I feel that is necessary uh, if you are to put the content marketing team. I will call something out. All right, so these are the four. Let's go to a frugal starter. OK, throughout the presentation, you will know what kind of movie I like. There will be clues, OK? If you have not seen Lego movie, you have to go see it. It's that good before Lego 2 comes out. Right? I, trust me, Lego did not pay me to say this. I just love Lego movie. I think they did a fantastic job. Characteristic of the stage. Chaotic, reactive, you take any help you can get, any help. Anybody wants to help you? <coughs> Say, yes, you are in. You are in my team. Forming and storming are happen pretty much at the same time. There's no process, there's no tools. Really, there's no scale. You are it. If you are HQ, you are it. And just bear in mind, set expectation up front with everybody. There's not much of localization. You do everything yourself, OK? A lot of us are actually here. I was there, OK? And from content production and content uh, channels perspective, this is what I would focus. Just standardize any kind of content you have. If you want to scale to other regions, if you just yourself, don't worry about translation. Don't worry about local localization. You will not have time. Content channel, focus on optimize your website. It's really the most of the effort that you should take to. And if you are social media managers, do so a limited outreach if all possible. 
then make your website good first. So the team structure, this is it. Whoever is you in the middle, there's no structure. You get whoever you can help. And you will actually look around and say, who can help me? Who can help me? Who can help me? At the end, it's you. You are helping yourself. So that's the team structure, unfortunately. And I, 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 when I was looking at this, I was like, can I create something more formal to share with everybody? And I thought about it and thought about it. No, I can't. Okay. So you do what you can. Again, focus on the website. And your job is support. Support marketing effort. You are not leading it. At this stage, you are also educating your whole team what content marketing is. And by the way, that journey never stops based on what I, you know, my experience never ever stop. What, what are you doing? Content, what is that? And you have to go through the whole thing and explain it. And uh, that's a journey. Let's talk about creative conductors. Okay. It's a norming to storming, a norming to forming stage. Everything is the same, except you actually do have limited support on the ground. And I'm talking about on the regions. You might have a sales, you might have marketing, you might have operation. Mostly likely to be, tend to be sales reps and also channel partners at early stage, okay? With that being said, it's still headquarter heavy. Here I want to emphasize, you will have a virtual team. And I want to emphasize, does anybody know what virtual team means? Okay. Um, when I say virtual team, it's not necessarily uh, it means, oh, you know what, you are in North Carolina, I'm in, you, New, in New York, and uh, you are in Europe. We, are the vir we virtually work together. That's virtual. That virtual means, that, that's, a vir that's the right definition of virtual. But in organizational structure, the virtual teams means dotted line. Does, in, they, does anybody understand what dotted line means? So some of you probably don't. Um, in enterprise, usually, in the big companies, um, direct reports, they call it uh, solid line, right? You, I, you directly report to me. Um, um, I have a budget and um, that you will hire, and uh, you are part of my direct report. That's called solid line and I will show in our organizational structure. And the dotted line means, um, for example, IT manager, I work very, very closely together, and uh, this IT manager are assigned to support multiple different projects I'm working on. But he reports directly to an IT manager, but he dotted line to me in terms of supporting my project. So when I say virtual right here, it's a dotted line. You will have a people that's dotted line, okay? When you say organization team structure, it's a dotted line, not necessarily solid line. So I just wanna make sure everybody uh, understand the jargon that I'm using. So that's what I mean by vir virtual. And then it's a collaboration, so it's basically still, in this effort, especially early on, it's still uh, headquarter heavy, it's still local, because you are, you are working through it, right? You are building a team. And the content production, you focus a little bit on standardization with subtitles. Subtitles, more focus on the standardization with subtitle. If you do videos, you might do some localization and translation on selective content pieces, not all of them. And on content channels, again, company website is still the primary focus, and the social media, local channels, and limited paid. That tend to be what I have seen working with different clients on different stage. And the team structure, like I said, still you, but you tap into the resources. This is a more formalized approach. By the way, another thing I want to share with you, tip number two. I was talking to Jerry, sitting right there, okay. Um, she came in early, so I was asking some of you in terms of what your expectation of the course, um, not course, a uh, session. And then she said, you know, putting a team together and that kind of thing. This is one thing I learned working at a corporation, enterprise, mid-sized company, or even an agency, you can tell your client this. Even though you are individual contributors, that means, okay, because I'm an individual contributor, I should not have org chart. I should not have a team structure. 
No, you absolutely should, especially you work in a big corporation. You can create org charts. Doesn't have to be like VP of marketing, tons of people reporting to them. You don't have to, and that's a solid line. You can create something like this. You and the people that you work with, it's a virtual team. It's very interesting in a big corporation when you put something in the PowerPoint, it validates it, it becomes official. It does. So it's okay if you have a virtual team that you work with, put a team structure like this, put it in front of them. That actually gives you apparent authority. That's a legal term, by the way. You don't have the real authority, but you have apparent perceived authority. And it actually helps. Okay, so that's a tip number two. That you still do what you can, but at this time, the content that you tend to create tend to be sales driven or product specific content. Again, you don't have a lot of budget. A lot of people still don't understand what content marketing is. The things that you tend to focus on is not necessarily storytelling yet. Well, if you're doing B2C, you're probably doing some of that, but if you're on the B2B side, you're still more focused on the product and the sales-driven type of content. And with sales and campaign teams input, again, you localize and refresh website as needed, and you still educating the virtual teams what content marketing is. That, like I said, that's still a journey.